All right, so let's go to this conversation now. The woman convicted of killing former squatter camp member Ngululego um, Flaba Habedi has been granted parole. And the Precious Manile was sentenced to 12 years imprisonment for murder in 2015. She's expected to comply with certain conditions and she will also be subjected to some supervision until her sentence expires in 2028. So let's get more on this now. Uh, we're joined by a spokesperson for the Correctional Services, uh, Singabako. Malu, thank you so much for your time. What convinced the board that uh, she was to be placed on parole? Oh, well, good evening and thank you for having us. Um, it's important to highlight that a journey for an inmate starts on the day of admission. That's when someone gets to be assessed. We then draw what we call a correctional sentence plan, which will then guide the journey towards rehabilitation of that particular person. That correctional sentence plan becomes very critical when a person has served the minimum required time. Uh, when you look at section 72 of the Correctional Services Act. Mm. Because what we do, we then take that correctional sentence plan and other material assessment reports by our specialists before the parole report. They then go through that and make a determination whether this person placed before them is ready to be placed back into society. But there must be some form of monitoring conditions until such time that the sentence expires. Hence, we always stress the point that parole placement is not the end of the sentence, but it's continued rehabilitation and the person adjusting to a normal life being out there in the community. I'll get to the corrections in just a moment, but very briefly tell us about this plan. Um, you know, what is included in it? Because we did see at some point she did graduate um, yes. and there's quite a lot that has been happening around her in terms of development. So what forms part of this uh, development of this plan? Uh, the assessment phase is quite extensive. We even give ourselves a period of 21 days. Uh, you will have various specialists, even in terms of your health profile, everything gets to be done there thoroughly. And out of that, we must be in a position to make a clear determination to say, this is what is wrong with this person. That's the offending behavior that has to be corrected. And they have to factor it in, in phases how we will go about, you know, correcting that offending behavior. From there, the next phase is to say, after correcting this offending behavior, how do we then prepare this person mm. for life post-incarceration? That's why then with developmental skills and other necessity then comes in to say, this person will benefit from these areas. You find that someone had issues perhaps growing up, things that may not have been discovered, and even during the court trial, things which were not of critical importance. So once that person is with us, we have to now dig deep so that at the end of the day, we're able to take a person back to the community, someone who has uh, who's now been rehabilitated, but someone who's ready to face life. And we talk of a second chance where a person can start to live as a law abiding citizen. Did she meet with uh, the family before this decision was taken? And the reason I ask is because I remember when I covered the trial, for example, her mother, his mother, in fact, speaking to journalists, he, she was always adamant that uh, Cindy Seward did not show enough remorse while on the stand. And she wasn't really happy about the testimony that. That, you know she delivered before the court so did the meeting with the family take place was mom Akata there what details can you tell us um, one of the programs that we also do in our facilities is the restorative justice that's where we take uh, let's call a perpetrator to the journey to us to say you you ought to um, understand that you've caused harm and you need to own up to that then from there, it will then highlight a need to say, uh, we want to build a society where there is peace. Therefore, the concept of victim offender dialogue comes into that. But then there's a lot of preparation that needs to take place. And I can confirm that victim offender dialogue did take place, and this was in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, this is also to deal with the fact that once a person is out there, you at least you've created an enabling environment where the two parties you know can find each other it may not be of immediate but you know uh, after a while they may see the need to say yes what you did to me was wrong 
I've lost someone, but I can see that you, you are now a different person and I'm willing to give you a chance. And you say that she's going to be part of the community corrections. Um, yes. So there's going to be quite a lot of supervision that is going to have to come into play here. Does it include uh, correctional officers visiting her family, um, her being present at certain times? Is the community work involved? Yes. How the system works is that when a person is placed out, um, on in, or let's say is being admitted into the system of correctional services there's what we call monitoring officials so that person will be attached to a monitoring official this is the official who will make it a point that you this person does stick to the parole conditions but also to assist in case this person is experiencing challenges uh, it, it's not just about someone complying with conditions but to say how to make it possible that you adjust and start to live a normal life and where there are certain challenges we unlock those and for instance someone finds it difficult to adjust and say please take me back we need to assist that person or a person decides that you know i'm going back to the life of crime it's then important that we take that person back into a facility because immediately then there's an area of danger there so this monitoring official is then important and those people are part of what we call a system of quality corrections watching social media this evening the department is coming under fire from some who are saying that um this was too soon it should not have happened it's the wrong decision your response uh so this woman was given 12 years and this was in 2015 we are now in 2022 uh, uh, what is half of um, uh, 12 years that would be your six years but that is not the, uh, the gauge that that we use someone has to be ready to reintegrate back into society hence she she you know she went even beyond the six years but we say a person has to be ready therefore we cannot just say because you've passed this period please go home we have to make it a point that you comply with everything that you need to do inside and you are ready to be taken back into society so seven years sure it's too soon? So I don't you, think so. So you're saying that that decision ticks all the boxes and the department can defend it and those who are criticizing you this evening are basically wrong and it's not warranted criticism? They have to bear in mind that it's not just the number of years. There's a lot involved. There's a number of variables that we look into. Uh, so hence, when we take this person before the parole board, we are almost convinced that uh, all that was expected of us, you know, we've done it. Let the board decide because it's an independent structure. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, thank you yes. and uh, giving us more on this uh, particular story. That's Singabako Namalo Correctional Services spokesperson.